The next question, vocabulary. Let's take a look at this. Pick out another word from paragraph one that has the same meaning as signal. Okay? So when they say this word, then the first thing we ask them, of course the key word here is uh, one word and signal, right? So what does signal mean, right? So you're going to ask them, is it like a traffic signal? Can, right? Why not? You can take it from there, like a traffic signal. It's like an indicator, right? So we go back to the paragraph and we look at this. So we look through the paragraph and you will see that this one, like cue for other kids to start picking on, oh, sorry about the double O, on, but picking on me, right? So here, signal for the other kids to start picking on me. So what is the signal? The signal if the adults actually ask you, oh, you're right, you're right, and the kids are like, ha, ha, that guy's weird. Okay, so that's the signal, ha, you are the target, right? So that's the signal. So we have to get them to guess it, right? So if they do not already know. So um, the answer, therefore, is Q. Another one, refer to paragraph three. Pick out the phrase that tells us the narrator's block became famous in a short period of time. Do you want to try this? So it's a phrase. So first of all, they must know what's a phrase. A phrase is more than one word, but less than seven less. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right? So became famous in a short period of time. So something here, right? So word about the blog spread like wildfire. All right, and then it goes on to explain from being a platform to blah, blah, blah. Then I found so many people come to me, blah, blah, blah. So this is an indication that you became famous and also in a very short period of time. So spread like wildfire. So that's, um, it's in a way we can also explain to them. It's metaphorical to a certain, I mean, it is metaphorical. So spreading like, like wildfire is um, actually something that spreads very, very quickly. Right, so we, we try to explain that as well, and they'll probably understand when they look at this whole sentence. So the answer would therefore be this. So things like that. So by posing questions like this, they would therefore understand the text better, and they through the context especially. Next, language use question. Okay, so in paragraph three, we learned that the child experienced accidental hits. So why do you think the word accidental is in inverted commas? Would you like to try that? So this is talking about how language is being used. Accidental, right? This is the paragraph. Part of it. Yeah, it's purposely done, right? Yeah, but so why do we, why do we usually use like, Oh, yeah, you're so clever, you know, you're so, you know, we do that, right? So that's a, if they, are, if they know that, then they probably can understand this. So is this something, to so show that something's not quite the whole truth, right? So that's it. It is to show that the bullies claimed they were accidents when in truth, in truth, sorry, they had purposely hit her, right? So that sort of thing. And finally, our inferential question. Okay. How can we tell... This is a, uh, the question comes like that. How can we tell, already you know it's inferential, that the narrator was extremely sensitive to the noise around her? How can we tell? Right? So if we go back to the passage, paragraph 2 had this. Even though I sat alone in a corner, I could still hear the noise when pens came into contact with the notebooks. At times when my coping mechanisms failed, I would scream and run out of the class to find a quiet spot. So this part shows that it's unbearable. This part shows about what? The sensitivity, right? Like even that noise. So this would be, would be something that, that they could have to pick up, right? So how can we tell? So the soft noise of the pens, this is important. So if they don't have the word soft, they may not get the full mark. Because the whole point is it's about being sen extremely sensitive. Extremely sensitive. So getting the students sensitive to such words is also important when there is a certain um, connotation to it. So soft noise of pens coming to contact with notebooks affected her so badly that she had to run out of the classroom screaming. If you want to write that, it's fine as well. So that shows how she was extremely sensitive to the noise. What did she do? This was the soft noise and what she did, which shows her sensitivity. So two parts, this will probably be a two-mark question. 
So we have to break it out for them. We break up the question for them so that they actually understand which part and why is extremely sensitive important. Why can't I just say noise or pens? Uh, sure, is there what? But we explain to them that you're not going to get the mark because you have not addressed the extremely sensitive part. Things like that. Okay, so basically when we um, give... So that's, that's just basically a quick uh, you know, look at all the reading comprehension skills. So basically when we actually... Um, Give students the text. For your weaker kids, you may want to uh, try giving them tips, you know, either verbally or, you know, just write at the side for those, those who have weaker classes. Maybe something that you can actually type at the side of the, you know, um, uh, text, question, sorry, the list of questions. So we can say, oh, this is a vocabulary question. Consider the use of this. Or what does this actually mean? Do you think that it means blah, blah, blah? You know, so that you give them a bit more confidence. Yeah, because I think a lot of students, they lack the confidence and once they give up, they give up. And they don't want to try, the brain is not working, so I can't do this, I don't know what you're talking about. That's it, they shut out. So, so we can try to help them. Um, I just, at this point, I just wanted to, uh, just to um, share something that if you have time, at least once in a while you can do this. Uh, what we used to do is, uh, you know, when the students, right, instead of us always... Uh, giving the questions, answering, giving the questions and answering. So what we did was we taught them the different types of questions, okay, what they are, you know, what's factual questions, what's vocabulary and all that. And then we got them to break out into groups. And then we got each group to, I mean, given a passage, each group to come up with well, a couple of questions. Maybe you've tried it as well. Yeah, that means of a certain type. It could be literal. So maybe this group does literal question, the other group does vocabulary type, and so on. And then they exchange the papers. And so they get to just, you know, try out. Of course, there are some, um, what do I say, uh, loopholes here. You have to ensure that the students' uh, questions are all quite decent, right? It can't be a little off, cannot be too general. So there's just some, some kind of... Uh, tweaking necessary. So it's good to have um, at least one of the more proficient ones in, in each group so that they can actually help to guide the students. So there's something else you can to just uh, do to just break the momentum you know, of the whole class. Okay, so that was just reading comprehension. So um, the other skills as well, this is the receptive skills. So this one is on listening. So for listening, I think um, it is, of course, uh, the it is not only about listening to the words, but making it, making it um, something that you can comprehend. That means some students, they just listen to the words, but they don't hear it as what's happening. So we have to encourage them to have a mental picture. When you are listening, to have a mental picture of the place, of whatever the context is to actually uh, go forward. So, and often they may not understand some word, and they go like, what? And they're like, huh? that's it, you know? Like, what happens, you know? So my son goes, like, I don't know what the meaning of the word is. And then it's like they feel they can't answer anything. But obviously, that's not true, right? So we have to explain to them that, that as well. So I just want to have a quick activity here. Maybe we can... I won't play the whole. This is actually um, uh, a dialogue. You can also find it on this magazine, pages 39 to 40. But the idea is to listen. So I have a question for you after this. You don't have to refer. Just listen. <laughs> Hey, Lisa. Will you be going to Justin Bieber's concert next month? Yes, Vera. He is one of my favourite singers. It is also amazing how he became famous simply through YouTube. Will you be going to Bieber's concert too? No, I am not a Bieber fan. I don't have any opinions on his music, but I don't think he has a good reputation. He has been accused of assault and even has been arrested once. He also behaved like a spoilt brat hurling eggs at his neighbour. I cannot disagree with you. He hadn't been a very good role model in the past. To be fair, he was also young and was only learning how to handle his fame. He is a better person now. Well, I did read that he was only 12 when he started posting homemade videos of himself singing on YouTube, and industry insiders took notice soon after. He was probably too young to embark on fame, that too with little guidance. Research has shown that being a child okay. star... We'll stop here positive. for the purpose of uh, the question I have here. Okay. So you've heard the listening, right? So I'm now going to post a question. So this is simple. There's, there's MCQ question. So why is Vera not interested in attending Justin Bieber's concert? So there are four options here. 
C, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we all know, right? So, but then, okay, if I were to like be very anal and try and analyze every single question, uh, sorry, option, right? I'll do something like that, okay? So, she does not enjoy Justin Bieber's music. So, we asked that, did Vera say that? Did she say she didn't like his music? What did she exactly say? She said, I don't have any opinions on his music, which means she's actually neutral. She doesn't really care whether you sing or you don't, you know, I mean, it doesn't make a difference to me. But nothing, no strong, any, no um, strong feelings in other words, of dislike or like. She's a fan of Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay wasn't even mentioned here, so if the student is putting this, you know students are on La La Land. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. The other one, she's concerned that Justin Bieber has a bad reputation. This comes close, although we hold. She, I don't think he has a good reputation accused of assault. Right? So this is probably that. But if he didn't, or if he or she did not quite get this, she's afraid he would hurl eggs at his fence. Did she say anything to suggest such a fear? No. He hurled eggs at the neighbor, right? So if they hear like half past six kind of thing, right? They do a half past six job, they hear half of it and they'll hear the other half, then they might think, oh yeah, yeah, hurl eggs. I saw I thought I heard that. Yeah, this is the one. Right. So you know we have to we have to get them to understand, look, listen carefully. Do you hear fully? Right? So so that's something that we can help them to do. So listening, basically, there's not nothing very magical. It's really about being patient and trying your best to concentrate when we listen, right? So, how long is usually the listening, uh, when you all give listening, how long is the, is the recording? Two to three minutes, right? Yeah, so the attention span has to be there, I guess. Okay, so yeah, so that's just the answer, okay?